nice. Oh, hey Lucy. Yeah, I'm feeling a little down right now. My family's going through some troubles. And I honestly don't know how to go about it. Would you like to share it with me? Well, it's a little private. But all I can say is that it's messy. And it's affecting the whole clan. I'm so sorry to hear that, Ned. And you know, it happens. Other people experience family problems too. But you know what? God always finds a way to make things work somehow. So I'll be praying for you and your family. Thanks, Lucy. That means a lot. No problem. You know what? Teacher Cat is sharing the story of Judah and Tamar for today's episode of Kids Hub. And if you're familiar at all with the story, you'll see that family problems happened even way back then. Really? Yeah, Ned. And the story doesn't focus on the problem, but how God delivered them from it and even blessed them despite how messy things got. You want to tune in with me? Sure, Lucy. Hi kids, and welcome to Kids Hub Online. You know, sometimes fighting in the family happens, just like Joseph and his brothers. We've been studying the life of Joseph, whose story is found in the Bible in the book of Genesis. He was Jacob's favorite son out of all his children, which made Joseph's brothers really jealous. So they sold him to be a slave. Talk about major fights with your siblings, right? What a messy problem. Now in today's lesson, we won't be learning about Joseph, but we'll see more messy problems in the life of his brother, Judah. Judah was the one who had the idea to sell Joseph into slavery. And Judah is special because it is through his family that God's promised seed, Jesus, will come from. So our story today begins after Joseph was sold as a slave in Egypt and Judah left somewhere far away. So let's see this short video clip so we can get a glimpse of what happened to Judah after he left his hometown. According to plan, Genesis chapter 38. Nobody likes to talk about what happened in Genesis 38 because it's so sad. After Joseph was sold as a slave, Judah went to live in a place far away called Canaan. He married a woman there, and they had three sons named Onan, Ur, and Shelah. Ur married a woman named Tamar. But he was so wicked that the Lord put him to death. Tamar was then given in marriage to Onan, but he refused to help her have any children. So the Lord put him to death too. Thinking that Sheila would also die, Judah wouldn't let him marry Tamar, and she had to go back and live with her own father. Judah told Tamar though that it was because Sheila was too young and that she could marry him later on, but he was lying. Poor Tamar. She was very sad and all alone. When Sheila grew up, she was still not allowed to marry him. And so Tamar took things into her own hands. She tricked Judah into sleeping with her by pretending to be someone else. What Judah and Tamar did was wrong. But God used it to make sure that the family of Judah didn't end. Because God promised to bring a very special king from Judah's own family. Someone who would rule over all the nations of the earth. Can you guess who that king might be? It wasn't just King David who came later on. It was Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the one who came according to God's plan. Wow! Judah's family went through a, quite a lot. 
Yeah, Ned. Imagine losing two of your sons and the craziness that happened to his daughter-in-law, Tamar. You see, Ned, a lot of families go through problems too, but we shouldn't lose hope. You're right, Lucy. God was still able to use this family, despite all the problems, to deliver His promise to us. Yeah, so don't feel so bad, Ned. Instead, let's focus on praying. Focus on God's plan and just give it all to God to help us deal with our problems, whether family-related or others. Thanks, Lucy. What a great reminder. Hey, kids. Wow, the story of Judah and Tamar is so fitting for my situation right now. It's great to know that no matter how hard or crazy things seem to get, God's plan will always prevail. I was reminded of a verse found in Psalm chapter 33, verse 11. And it says, But the Lord's plan will stand forever. His ideas will last from now on. How comforting to know that our God is that powerful. And you know, things happen for a good reason. Even not so great things. But we need to take heart and lean on God all the more when faced with trouble. He will always find a way to make things right and according to His will as long as we continue to love and trust Him. So let's say that verse again, shall we? Psalm chapter 33, verse 11. And it says, But the Lord's plans will stand forever. His ideas will last from now on. That's it for today's memory verse. See you all again next week! Hi kids, and welcome to my show, Get Crafty with Lucy! So today, I wanted to make something special for Ned to remind him of the goodness of God even in our troubled times. With me today is none other than Teacher Aimee. Hi, Teacher Aimee. Hi, Lucy. So what are we doing today? Today, we're going to make a messy but beautiful portrait of ourselves. Are you ready? Here are the materials you'll need. A white colored paper, markers, straws, Poster paint mixed in with a little water to make it runnier than usual. So first, draw a picture of yourself without hair. Next, pour some of your paint on top of the head of your portrait. Then, Get your straw and blow the paint outwards to create this messy but beautiful hair. You can get even craftier with this art by putting stickers or heart cutouts to remind us that no matter how messy things get, God loves us and we can be at peace knowing that. This is great Lucy, but a great reminder of God's grace and mercy. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Teacher Aimee, and I hope you kids enjoyed it too. Until next time, bye! Hi again! You know, the story of Judah and Tamar kind of came out of nowhere in the Bible. Right in the middle of the story of Joseph being sold into slavery comes this story. But why though? Why would God want to include a story of a messed up family in the middle of a great story? Well, you see, it's all part of the plan. Let's summarize our story for today. So Tamar was married to Judah's firstborn son, Ur. But Ur was not a very nice man, so God took his life away. And back in their day, it was customary for the brother-in-law or the brother of Ur to take on the responsibility as husband to the wife he left behind, Tamar. 
But turns out, Ur's brother Onan was just as bad as Ur. So God also took him away. Now, they had a third brother, Shelah. But since the first two brothers died, their father Judah was a little bit uncomfortable for his last son to marry her. He thinks Tamar was bad luck. So Tamar had to take care of this messy situation herself. So she tricked Judah. She then got pregnant by Judah, and upon finding out that he was the father, he took the responsibility and had a change of heart. Now Tamar gave birth to twins, and that was the last we heard from her. Judah, however, after owning up to his mistake, was later blessed mightily in Egypt. He was so blessed by God even after everything he has done. So why is this story so relevant that it had to cut through the story of Joseph? Well, because it has a lot of valuable lessons. And again, it's all part of God's plan. You see, problems happen within family, friends, or other people. But just because things get messy, it doesn't mean that God will stop blessing you. This story also emphasizes on the grace of God who was so merciful to Judah, even in his sinfulness. And how about Tamar? Though she tricked Judah, she was still referred to as someone righteous. Why? Because in her tough position as someone who lost two of her husbands and labeled as bad luck, she stood up for her rights. But that doesn't mean that you guys are given the leeway to trick people, okay? Not at all. Judah was responsible for her, but he didn't do anything about it until later on. So in a nutshell, Genesis 38 was included in the middle of the story of Joseph to show people that no matter how messed up things may get, God is still working behind the scenes to make His plans happen. And what is this plan? To bring about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who would come from the line of Judah and Tamar. And also, this whole mess actually allowed Judah to have a change of heart. Remember how he led his brothers to selling Joseph as a slave? Well, we find out later on in the story that after all this happened to Judah, he felt horrible and decided to make amends with his brother Joseph. Isn't that great? So that ends it for today's episode of Kids Hub. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from this story. Continue to stay tuned as well as we veer back to the story of our main man, Joseph. Now before we end, let me lead you all in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, that despite some of the mess we go through, you always find a way to make things better. We love you so much. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.